I'm Clint Culberson with LordsOfConsciousness.com, and I'm here at Jim and Jam 2017, and I'm joined by a very special guest. Her name is Shelby Birch, and she has been up to some really great stuff in terms of helping push forward the the education, knowledge, understanding of entheogenic, psychedelic, whatever you'd want to call them, so that you can at least understand what we're talking about uh, plants. And you've you've been down in South America doing doing some studies and so I, w I was hoping maybe you could kind of give me the the general overview of what you've been up to of course um, I'm, I'm a psychophysiological researcher by uh, training and I uh, wanted to correlate a lot more of my study and my work with uh, what I'm passionate about and and that led me through a lot of serendipitous events and connections to um, studying down in the jungle and I I took a psychophysiological measures of, of people going through the process of working with ayahuasca and psychophysiology is really the interaction between the body and the mind, the way the two systems communicate. And to measure that I took cognitive measures uh, of depression and, and perspective and how people see themselves and correlated this with uh, physiological measures of stress and toxicity in the body through um, blood, blood level blood measurement levels of cortisol as well as doing a urinalysis, a daily urinalysis to watch the toxicity flushing ideally from the system. And uh, through this I did dried blood spot testing and shipped it up to a, uh, to a lab in America and I found that after observing uh, the results I observed in before going into any kind of process, before the person left their home environment, so they got a stress reactivity in their home environment. While they were doing the process of, of drinking and going into ceremony, I, I collected their stress reactivity as, then as well. And then after they returned home, I took to, collected their cortisol levels to understand how reactivity to stress had changed since before going to the center. And I found that in, it, there was an incredible normalization of the cortisol curve to a healthier uh, during all cortisol curve after the the process and when comparing an individual to themselves in before and after there was a significant on every person a normalization on a statistical level a significant normalization to a healthy cortisol curve and that was interesting to see <laughs> What, what in the plant is causing that? Do we know on a scientific level exactly what components within the plant, you know, m molecular structure is, is actually, you know, reacting with human beings like this? So I don't think it's a very individualized thing. And I don't think that you can really pinpoint a reaction of the plant, though you can pinpoint a process of, reac of stress reactivity because our bodies are naturally conditioned to respond to stress. And since our evolution hasn't really caught up to the way that we use stress in our normal day-to-day -to -day life, we symbolize stress as success. Whenever you put stress into something, you, you get an output of, of, a, of a job well done, essentially. And this works great for our cognitive systems. Though this does not work well for our physiological systems because to your body, you're still on the Sahara, running from a, a cheetah or what have you. So whenever you stress your mind out and you stimulate the amygdala response, you're actually causing a physiological response in your body. So whenever you have a high level of stress and that trigger mentally, you're having a high level of stress physically. So whenever you uh, go into ayahuasca and you, and you do psychological healing in that, you are actually training yourself to become less reactive to stress as cognitive behavioral training whenever you um, try and regulate the way that you react to situations and through using medicine you can understand those regulations and, and work with them and define them and tweak them and so I think that is more so why you see a lot of this decrease in physical stress because you've actually altered the way that your mind intakes cognitive stress. How much, how much studies and, and how much attention and funding has, been, has really ever been given to psychedelic plant medicines already? I mean, how much more do we have to go? Is there, it's, it's quite expansive. And, and how does that compare to existing flora and fauna, the non-psychoactive type? But uh, is, it, is it a much smaller percentage of, of, you know, the, of what, you know, the ayahuasca vine and what, we've already, what we already know about that? So I think there is such a breadth of study that can be done 
in, in psychotropics, but specifically with plant medicines, because not all plant medicines are psychotropic. You have a lot of the origins for synthesized medication now, actually all medication now, comes from plant knowledge. And um, through extracting that, we, we've developed processes from that. But all of these medicines or originate from plants, and, and these cultures have an understanding that they still use many of these plants to heal on a psychological as well as physiological level. And um, I think that that breadth of study can never really be um, extinguished because you have so many plants that um, can be used, it, even if they're not uh, psychotropic per se. And there are subtle levels of psychotropic nature to, to many plant diets in the Amazon that are not specifically um, uh, an ayahuasca type experience. What would you tell what would you tell someone who is contemplating having their very first you know psychedelic experience or entheogenic experience you know a, a, a true shamanic journey in a sense what would you tell someone who's on the fence about it and but is looking at it from a from the perspective of what mainstream culture and you know education has told us that these are bad for us and these are just drugs that are going to ruin your life so on and so forth what would you tell that person that's looking into it now well i i obviously don't have the perspective that um drugs have of are uh they can they should be used with caution and respect uh Though I, I believe that if anyone is looking to have a psychotropic experience, I, I feel it's very important to have a guide. Um, whether that be someone monitoring you while you're in the experience or someone to, to speak with you about this kind of thing before you go through it. Uh, even if it is a completely individualized situation, you want to have someone that can relate to you. That you know that even if, if you're experiencing something traumatic that they've never experienced, you have someone with you and and honestly just to have patience with yourself like a lot of the times breakthrough experiences even if they seem really amazing at the time uh, it takes a lot of work to actually integrate that information and in how you develop your life and so to, to take these lessons with a reverence but to also understand that it requires a lot of work outside of um, the actual trip to, to develop yourself and um, don't be scared of yourself, essentially, because that's what you're looking at, is yourself. Yeah. Absolutely. It's the ultimate mirror, isn't it? <laughs> Where can people find what you're, what you're up to, or can they can people keep track of what you're, what work you're, you're involved with? Because I know you're, you're getting out on the speaker circuit and sharing some of the studies that you've been doing, which is super important, because obviously every single, you know, shred of evidence that we can we can piece together to really show paint the, the real picture of what these plants are and you know it's probably will take us maybe generations to really understand exactly what these plants are but where where, where, where does your path lead now in terms of your studies and your in your studies you know your research that you're doing yeah i um this is one of the first talks I've done like this, and I, I've done a couple of research conferences as well, though I really like to connect with people on this level because I find that so many people um, really want to talk about these things, and we need to be open about it in, in developing because it's going to just lead to a more healthy way of interacting with one another. Um, and connecting online, I have a website. If um, It's Amaru Research, A M A ru research.com and you can email me or, or whatever on that um, and I want to develop a, another study within the next few months uh, working ideally with a lab that works with the Hefter Institute uh, to produce uh, physiological measures that uh, really focus on autoimmune uh, function and inflammatory function and through that and the use of placebo as well as isolating particular dietas outside of ayahuasca began to understand how more long-term neuromodulation happens in the communication between our synapses and how that affects cognition. It's unbelievable. That's so, it's incredible to see young people too that are just, just coming onto the scene who really want to make a difference. And I don't even know how old you are, but it doesn't really matter. But it's amazing just to, yeah, <laughs> but it's still, I mean, I'm young too, but e so even to just find people who are really wanting to pick up the banner, pick up 
the you know where where even our older generation has has led us so far you know this is not we are we aren't the first people to have discovered this you know there's been a lot of people laying the groundwork essentially yeah. we're we're remembering a lot more of, of of what we already know about ourselves and 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 i feel like um different psychotropics are just tools in your toolbox as as the person that i work with would say and and his name is uh david Hewson, and he's a he's a really a, amazing man who allowed me to uh conduct research at a center and poke poke people that he was trying to help and nice. <laughs> with take out blood and all of that uh so I, i'm really grateful to the people that i've uh connected with and this research and in, in this path in which i'm taking in life um it really wasn't a choice i i felt it was either um evolve or live in 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 a a, a life that i couldn't do and so I did, and and I I will continue to do it because that's humans. We adapt and we learn, and there's just so much more left to explore. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, it's an honor to to interview people who, like you who are doing such amazing work. And one of the things at LordsOfConsciousness.com is that we really do want to focus on uh, the even the truths that aren't always being told you know we at the end of the day the truth will put be will hold up against any test you put it up against and in LLC media we want to make sure that we're, we're exploring all these perspectives and uh, find us find us on YouTube and, and, and subscribe to us and we to get more content like this with people like Shelby who are doing such amazing things and thank you Shelby really appreciate you for, for, for joining me